this is a video blog about Brexit. It's a video blog about poetry. It's a video blog about the Britain of my youth, of the culture from which I came and in which I grew up. I spent the formative years of my life in Oxfordshire. I went to the Warrener School in Bloxham. The Warrener School is a comprehensive school and we were fortunate um, back then in the 1970s. The Warrener School was built and we had good facilities. Down the road from our school was Bloxham College which is a very nice public school. Several of my friends went to Bloxham School. Indeed, some were sent there from our school uh, for various misdemeanours and uh, others came the other way. Now, Oxfordshire of my youth was a very different place today. There's something called the Chipping Norton set, which to an extent always existed. I was brought up in a small village called Barford St Michael and uh, Barford St Michael has a, um, a nice house which as a young man I was the gardener there for Mrs Stapleton. Now the Mitfords used to own that house and it was built by a Texan oil millionaire um, and I set myself the task that I wanted to buy that house um, which seemed like an unattainable dream but one which I took with me into my later years. I never did buy Rignall Hall but what I did do is I bought the Belmont Estate which adjoins Chinksfield and uh, became an eccentric country squire. You'll find all of this on my various bloggings, musings, scribblings and videoings which I've put together over the past 10 years um, of my self-imposed exile here in Sweden from where I speak today. In 2016 there was a vote for Brexit and uh, the discourse on that vote, um, on all sides, was, in my opinion, less than honest. This isn't a blog about all of that, the pluralities and the dualities and the sophistry that accompanies it. This is a blog about my youth and about cricket. I played village cricket for Bloxham and when I left Oxfordshire in my 16th year so this is going back now to 1980 after the end of uh, school and doing my O-levels um, my family moved to West Germany as it was then my father worked for the government and uh, amongst other things he looked after the um, training ranges at Saltar for instance um, and many of my friends um, have been and are in the military. Now why is that important? Um, it's important because that last summer was a formative summer for me. Um, I attended the uh, first Fairport Convention um, concert which is now quite a large thing and quite well known. But then the first one was held in Broughton Castle and I remember Fairport Convention playing their famous song Meet on the Ledge and here we are on the dawn of Brino, Brexit in name only um, and it's been presented as a ledge of some sort but I've cast my mind back. I'm a poet um, when I moved to Germany, which was for a second time in 1980, the first time my first wife heard me speak, uh, was reading a passage from 
the famous book about an Oxford childhood um, called Cider with Rosie. My five years in Oxfordshire gave me an Oxfordshire accent and my head of sixth form at the Kent School, Rhindarland, which was a military boarding school and day school, um, felt it would be amusing for him and the other staff that I should read this in my Oxfordshire accent. And my first wife thought I was the best actor she'd ever heard, but of course I was just speaking in my then accent. Now, playing village cricket that last summer back in 1980, I remember playing uh, Sibford. Now, Sibford Gower is the location of another wonderful school, uh, the Friends School in Sibford. And um, it's a beautiful cricket ground at the Friends School um, with a wonderful backdrop. I used to play wicketkeeper in those days. And we had a wonderful afternoon of cricket um, with all of the, the dramas and wonderful moments that happen in a village cricket match with some local rivalry and after the match we went to the Bishop's Blaze pub which is a beautiful pub if you ever get the chance to visit and during the summer in those days they used to have con uh, concerts or gigs and there was a, a guy with a ovation guitar um, singing Bob Dylan songs and we would all sit there and drink and listen to this and I remember those days with, with great fondness and that's the uh, the background to a Britain, an Oxfordshire, an adolescence and an education outside of the Warrener School, outside of friendships with those who had greater privilege than I, but I felt very privileged, do feel very privileged to have enjoyed the childhood and education which I got at the Warrener School. But cricket and poetry. Um, this morning I was reading a um, a poem. I'm just clicking through my screen here because I've been working on various things which um, have cropped up in my studies this morning. I'm an early riser, um, and it's just occurred to me that I should write this. But if I can just. Uh, do this here and bear with me. And let's just get down. where I want to go. Let's move. Where shall I go? Well, I know where we will go. Let's just go here. Does social media figure in this stream of consciousness? The memory hole works both ways. It's like the White Queen's memory. So here we are. This admin admin question, um, which has cropped up on the Green Party blog, and partly directed at my habit of. Uh, preserving conversations before they disappear into the memory hole. But if we go to the end of this discussion here, it's 
to which I made this contribution, the Hound of Heaven. Now, The Hounds of Heaven, or The Hound of Heaven, is a poem by Francis Thompson. It's a beautiful poem, and I suggest you read it. I will put the link in the description to this video. Um, but Francis Thompson was an interesting chap. He had been a medical student following his father into the medical profession, but uh, left that profession to pursue a vocation as a poet um, and uh, I was reading an essay he did on Shelley um, much earlier this morning um, but he wrote another poem um, which is the poem I'm going to read now and perhaps with that long introduction and context uh, you'll see what it provoked in, in my mind. Now, on Wikipedia, under poems about cricket, there's this poem. Francis, to Francis Thompson wrote a poem, and it's called At Lords. It is little I repair to the matches of the southern folk, though my own red roses there may blow. It is little I repair to the matches of the southern folk, Though the red roses crest the caps I know. For the field is full of shades as I near a shadowy coast, And a ghostly batsman plays to the bowling of a ghost, And I look through my tears on a soundless clapping host, As the run-stealers flicker to and fro, to and fro. O oh, my Hornby and my Barlow long ago, It's Gloucester coming north, the irresistible, The Shire of the Graces long ago. It's Gloucestershire up north, the irresistible, And new-risen Lancashire the foe. A Shire so young that has scarce impressed its traces, Ah, how shall it stand before all restless graces. O oh, little red rose, their bats are as maces To beat thee down this summer long ago. This day of seventy-eight, They are come up north against thee, This day of seventy-eight long ago. The champion of the centuries, He come up, up against thee with his brethren, Every one a famous foe. The long-whiskered doctor That laugheth at the rules to scorn, While the bowler pitched against him Bans the day he was born. And G.F. with his science Makes the fairest length forlorn. They are come from the west To work thee woe. It is little I repair to the matches of the southern folk, Though my own red roses there may blow. It is little I repair to the matches of the southern folk, Though the red roses crest the caps, I know. For the field is full of shades as I near a shadowy coast, And a ghostly batsman plays to the bowling of a ghost. And I look through my tears on a soundless clapping host As the run stealers flicker to and fro, to and fro. Oh, my hornby, my barlow, long ago. Now, it means a lot where we come from, where we've been, what we are, who we are, what we believe in, fair play. A 
and so we come again to Brexit and not cricket, not quite cricket, and this short poem. Block, 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 at the foot of thy wicket, O Scotton, and I would that my tongue would utter my boredom, you won't put the pot on. O oh, nice for the boiler, my boy, that each ball like a barn door you play. O oh, nice for yourself, I suppose, that you stick at the wicket all day. And the clock's slow hands go on, and you still keep up your sticks. But oh, for the lift of a smiting hand, and the sound of a swipe for six. Block, block, block. At the foot of thy wicket, hard do. But one hour of grace, or Walter Reed, were worth a week of you.